Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. I'll be talking about SIADH Lesson 2, and that will cover causes, symptoms, and differential diagnosis. But before you can enjoy SIADH Lesson 2, I will advise that you listen to the Lesson 1. There I have covered some terms the pathophysiology, the different types of SIADH, and how we can make the diagnosis. With that in mind, let's go. Before going or diving into causes, let me quickly brush you know, a point here, that is urine output osmolarity. Urine output is not only a factor of ADH level, but also of the following. A. Solute excretion, which should be that when there is increased water intake, that should lead to decreased osmolality. And that should also lead to decreased ADH secretion. With that, we should have decreased collecting tubus permeability and will later on have urine output increase or from increased water intake. But the above mechanism is not what we are going to find with SIADH because increased water intake does not lead to increased urine output. ADH level is fixed. We will likely have normal urine osmolality within 40 to 100 milli osmos per kg. And the solute that we're going to be dealing with here will be sodium, potassium, and urea. There's what we call escape from ADH effects with initial water retention and aponatremia after being given ADH and water. Despite increased ADH, os osmolality of the urine will drop. When urine osmolality drops, urine volume increases proportionately to water intake plasma sodium will stabilize. That is escape from ADH effect. Causes of SIADH. Stroke. Stroke. Some call it cerebrovascular accident. Cystic fibrosis. I have separate presentations on stroke. I think I have two of them. Check my channel. And cystic fibrosis at a glance. Check my channel also. Tuberculosis. I'll have that done the next few weeks or months. Encephalitis. Meningitis. Multiple sclerosis. Glenbar syndrome, head trauma or traumatic brain injury, psychosis, low body dementia, cerebral hemorrhage, ectopic ADH, for example, small cell lung carcinoma, and the cancer of the head and neck region, lymphoma, or air wing sarcoma. Some medications are not left out, including street drugs. And on the list, we have carbamazepine. If you check my presentation on carbamazepine, you are going to get this, particularly how aponatremia is very, very pronounced in people taking carbamazepine. You will find the detailed explanation there. Clopropamide. 
many chemotherapeutic agents, oscarbazepine, cyclophosphamide, antidepressant like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Somebody is shocked that SSRI could give SIADH, don't be, anesthetic agents, street drugs, ecstasy, amiodarone. And then what is saying, oh wow, my grandpa is taking amiodarone. Mm -hmm. Imagine it, ciprofloxacin, just from treating the bacterial infection, you are now dealing with SIDH. Sodium vibrate or vibric acid surgery. Hypopituitarism. Gastrointestinal tract carcinomas like pancreas, stomach, or duodenum. Pneumonia. HIV infection. Positocin. Desmopressin. Nausea. Pain. Strikes. Exercise. Acute asthmatic attack. And of course, we inherit a lot of stuff from our parents, but sometimes some people inherit what the parents would have probably inherited from their parents also. That is hereditary syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And when we can't find any of this, we come to a very usual term in medicine called idiopathy. What are the possible symptoms? No test. No, when you are thirsty and you be able to drink more water and so on, but in these affected individuals, that won't be the case. They have what you call a volumic hyponatremia. They drink normally and normal amount of fluid. They could have nausea and vomiting. They could have cramps, tremor, changes in mood that would be towards the downward trend, could become depressed with decreased mood, could become confused. And even you could be thinking of some other possible diagnosis because they are confused. Now, some will say, is it head injury? Is it, no, apotyroidism? Is it balamic B12 deficiency? Is it apoglycemia? It's just aponatremia, confusion. Still on symptoms, cognitive impairment, the rate at which they could take executive, you know, Decisions will become impaired. They will become irritable, irritability. They could even be hallucinating. And some will become very, very aggressive. That is why when it's happening in people with dementia, particularly the body, now the confusion is said everywhere. And if Correction is not made on time, they could go into seizures. Right there, convulsing before you. And with further worsening of the situation, they will then go into a coma. That is when so many people would know that something serious is happening somewhere. Now, Differential diagnosis. We need to ask ourselves, you know, after going through the history and physical examination of the affected person, that, okay, 
This is pointing to a syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, but could it be hypothyroidism? And of course, history of feeling excessively cold, weakness, tiredness, constipation, and all the lives due to your thyroid stimulate no more on T3, T4 level will give the clue. Are we dealing with adrenal insufficiency? How about hemorrhage? Any history of trauma and bleeding anywhere, or bleeding dyscrasia somewhere, or taking anticoagulant? Any liver cirrhosis? Of course, that would be obvious. We're going to see the ascites and probably jaundice, if not even hepatic encephalopathy. Any nephrotic syndrome? Generalized body swelling and osaka, and so on. Renal failure, of course, the level of urea creatinine will also reveal that. Is this person on diuretics of not various types like uh, flusemide, high cylinder arthritis, potassium sparing, and so on? Bonds, congestive cardiac failure. Could this be? as a result of manitor, or smoothie diuretics, or even hypoalbuminemia. You can easily get that, just as the albumin level. And of course, is this as a result of side effects of lithium? So we need to know if the, this person is dealing with mood disorder and is on lithium, because lithium will give nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So by the time we rule out all these possible differential diagnoses, then we'll be comfortable to go ahead with the treatment. So the next presentation will be on the treatment. So thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. So watch out, treatment of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone in and out. You'll get everything in the next presentation. Thank you.